Good evening, this is that one guy broadcasting from Dark Outside Holland. Uh, this is still point two two, and I almost guarantee, no matter how this shakes out, I'm about to introduce you to my last SSTO of point two two. Now, this is not because I suspect point two three is coming out in the next couple of weeks. I would imagine that's going to be somewhere after the 20th. But, uh... The reason is, I have. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the reason is, I have gone about as far as I can with SSTOs that do not haul any sort of uh, cargo or payload into space. Um, let me load this up a quick second. The sixth variant of the Pisces craft. Uh, I'm assuming with tweakables I may be able to create a crew storage type situation in here. Um, a couple of things based on some of the points I learned about the Pisces uh, design project. First off, I needed some more supports uh, to keep the whole thing from wobbling itself apart at the end of the runway. Second, this fuel tank right here is uh, used as a measuring tank for when I bring fuel up to orbit so that I can put an equal amount of weight in either side of the craft. Uh, these RCS tanks are disabled during flight in order to preserve as much RCS, and it's easier to balance these two external tanks than it is to balance the more internal tanks underneath the wingspan. Uh, the time to orbit is about 15 minutes. Uh, so it's... Jesus Christ, he just zipped by there, didn't he? Anyways, the time to orbit is about 15 minutes, so you're going to need to set your uh, target 15 minutes uh, behind where it needs to be. This differs from the Pisces one by a total of 3 minutes, um, so rather than launching when the target of 150 kilometer circular orbit is over the mountain slightly east of, I'm sorry, west of the KSC. You need to now launch when the station at 150 circular kilometers is roughly halfway between the desert continent and the African looking continent. Uh, so let's go ahead and go out to the runway and I'll run you through the pre-flight shakedown. Okay, and now that we're out on the runway, we can look at some of the pre-flight measures that need to be taken to fly this craft. First, we're going to shut down these two outer tanks by right-clicking them and then left-clicking the green play arrow. This will keep all of the monopropellant in these tanks isolated and unused, which means when we get into orbit uh, to my station, we could, in theory, dump all of this fuel off. Uh, other than that, the SSTO fires all of its jet engines with space, that way I don't have to worry about igniting the jet engines, lighting all of these at the same time. Then, uh, all the rockets go off at the same time, action groups shut down the jets, then these with the two, uh, these are one, and then the nuclear finally with three, as this is designed to land and take off again if I need to from the surface of a planet with an atmosphere. With an oxygenated atmosphere, I should say. Alright, so, let's go ahead and, let me see, that is about right for a, and I'm sorry, intercept with my space station. Now, this is not going to be a standard flight for a couple of reasons. First, I will be keeping all of my fuel in the uh, in the Pisces 6 SSTO itself uh, for the reasons that this, again, is a K-Prize attempt. Uh, number two, my station is full up on fuel already. Um, so it would make zero sense for me to, uh, to, uh, dump more fuel into a system that already has way more than it needs already, because I'm waiting for my Mooner tow craft to come out. Now, you have to get off the end of the runway for 
the plane to be able to angle its nose up, which I feel is pretty common with large Ur SST. Whoa, that's a lot of drop that we just experienced. Which I feel is common with larger SSTOs. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, this is a little bit finicky that I'm trying to keep it on 45 degrees at roughly heading 90. Oh, well, there's your problem. I didn't have my SAS on. <laughs> oh, goodness. It is early morning. That should help me out a bit. All right, now, the nice thing about this craft is it does sort of auto-gravity turn for you. What do I mean by that? I mean that uh, once you get up to about 9,000 meters, the craft is going to come down to about where you need to be in order to uh, maintain your flight profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out, I'm going to put some music to this, and this takes about 15 minutes of flight to get out to orbit. So here we go. Here we are. We are now currently in orbit. Uh, let's take a look at this. Hit V a quick second. Excellent, yes. We are now currently in an orbit of no lower than 100,000 kilometers, or 100,000 meters. Uh, this can get into space and on station with up to and over. Uh, it's somewhere usually between about 700 liters of fuel and 1,200 liters of fuel. Uh, this time I kind of screwed up my burn a little bit, as this is only about the fourth time I've ever flown this craft. Um, let's talk about power supplies. Uh, this has a decent amount of power uh, that it can uh, store between those four batteries. However, it also has its own solar array along this sort of spine, let's call it. Now, I did say we were going to the Gavia station, and that's because all of my landings, and I realized this a couple of nights ago, are based on coming down from 150 kilometers. So I might as well just dock with the Gavia station and show you guys what's up. 
so right now we're just approaching where we're going to need to do our rendezvous burn. I sort of overestimated or underestimated how much time I needed uh, to let this be behind the rendezvous initial point, uh, so that cost us an orbit. Then again, that's not that bad. Um, okay, so we're 10.5 away there. 2.8 could be good. 2.9, 1.6, that sounds fine. So now we're going to turn on the RCS, which I remind you again, we shut off the external RCS tanks in case we would need to transfer some out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to dock. We are not going to transfer any fuel to or from this ship, as I am attempting a K-Prize run with this. And uh, just as an FYI, the ship has plenty of fuel. It can get to the MUN and back. I could, in theory, dock at the Gavia station, go out to the MUN, come back to Kerbin, dock at the Gavia station again, and then come back down to Kerbin. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this flight because, well, I have class in about an hour. So, all right, we're going to rendezvous. I will put on some music until we do that. Alright, and uh, here we have the station. Uh, we should be recharged our ship. Uh, now, technically I wasn't supposed to pick up any resources, but I did in fact pick up some electrical charge. I feel like though that can be forgiven because the ship has the capability of picking up its own electrical charge. It would be different had this not had any solar panels and I needed electricity to land. Uh, I could, in theory, pick up some guys from here, but as you see, uh, the reasons I can't transfer fuel off are because this is pretty much a full fuel tank for operating purposes. I can just come in with uh, my... That was my glasses. I can come in with my Mooner, uh, Trans Mooner shuttle, uh, dock, take fuel out, take it out to the MUN. Um, very, very simple operation. Uh, but this will greatly speed up the way that my infrastructure uh, works. Um, so, yep, I've got about 15 minutes. Let's see if we can't land this thing. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is... Oh, well, uh, okay, I guess we're here. <laughs> uh, I use the... India subcontinent looking place as my reference point. Now this shuttle is going to be coming, or shuttle, this ship is going to be coming in quite a bit heavy. So let's hope that we bounced enough off of the station. Okay, we good. We good. We good. Yep. It is early morning. <laughs> Alright, and... There we are. Now we're going to close up this shield. We're going to fire up our main engines, and let me think, if we're past our points, we're going to need to come in shallow. Are we? No, if we're past points, past point there. So it's... Okay, we're going to have to come in hot. So, 
this is fully loaded, which I guess I'm not really used to. Um, most of my craft, they uh, come in and they're just completely empty by the time they hit Kerbin. Uh, everything is still attached, I believe. Yes, I'm just wobbling a lot. Um, my frame rate is about 8 right now, just because the Pisces 6 has so many pieces, and it's in close proximity to the Gavia station. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, oop, kind of zoned out there. It doesn't really matter, I've got the RCS to speed myself back up. Alright, so... Yep, we're farther away, our frame rate is back to normal which that's good. Uh, so let's see, I'm farther, so I said I have to come in hotter, but I want some go-around capabilities, so what we're going to do is we're going to come into my normal 15,000 meters. There we are. Now, uh, this ship, um, if we take a look at what we're coming down with, we have plenty of monopropellant. We've got almost two full tanks here, uh, or two full tanks. We have two full tanks here. We have almost a quarter of a tank there, uh, which that's fine. So let's speed this up a little bit until we get close to the atmosphere. Then we're going to realign. Okay, and there we are. So we need to come up to heading 9-0. by the time that we hit sort of the thicker parts of the atmosphere, because I guarantee you we're not going to hit it before we hit the atmosphere proper. So, yeah, see, we're about 2,000 meters away from the atmosphere. I'm probably going to be about sideways when I hit it, but the point is I'm facing the right way. Yep, I was about sideways when we hit the atmosphere. Now, the nice thing is there's not a lot of atmosphere up here, so I can do a lot of my maneuvering with the RCS, and I don't need to worry about um, the lift surfaces grabbing onto any sort of uh, any sort of uh, thing. Wow, that was bad. Any sort of air that's up here. Now, what may end up having to happen is you may notice a pretty significant hiccup in this video because I'm cutting it pretty close right now. I need to I need to get moving. Um, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to bring this thing down by the time I need to get to class. So, here's what's going to happen. I'm putting on the pause button right now, and I'm going to stop the recording, and I'm going to come back after class, and I'm going to finish this flight. So... I'm just explaining why the pause button is hit. It's not because I'm doing anything off screen. Well, I'm doing stuff off screen, but it's real life stuff. Hope that doesn't disqualify me for a K prize. I'm not sure that it does. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, and while it's only been literally less than half a second for you, it's been about two hours for me. All right, so let's land this thing. Uh, ordinarily, I would cut away uh, from speaking and... Uh, throw on some music, but I'd still like to talk a little bit about uh, some of the features of this craft. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this tank serves almost no purpose except to measure fuel. Uh, I can use it to evenly distribute the weight on either side after I dump fuel up at the Gavia station. Uh, for those of you who are either more clever or just sort of notice a trend with the way I name things, uh, I name them after Latin stuff. For example, my primary space station that we just came away from is called the Gavia Station, which means seagull. Uh, this is the Pisces craft because the original Pisces craft, if you took off the wings, kind of looked like a fish. Um, like one of those angelfish or whatever. They have like the zebra patterns. I don't know. So, this is a pretty standard descent. The problem is I'm coming in pretty heavy. But as you'll see, I would, have, I would have been able to dump something in the neighborhood of 700 liters of fuel into orbit, which for anybody who's running any sort of infrastructure in space would be wonderful. That would be my roommate coming home. 
Uh, one thing about this craft is it is fairly large. You can see Lagsbane occasionally attempting to kick in here, and what's really going to happen is once we hit uh, the atmosphere a little harder, which looks like we might be starting to build up the Gs to do that, uh, we're really going to start getting um, a dropped frame rate and Lagsbane kicking in. However, as long as we're starting to get the red glow, or the pink glow, or whatever the astronauts called it, right about as we get slightly over the shore, we'll be okay. Now, the th reason that I'm probably not getting the glow at this time is because this craft, as I said, I've only flown about four flights of this thing. This is flight number four. Uh, the reason probably is this large wingspan allows it to just glide. Oh, look, Mimmus is riding. Ah, here we are. Now, I would have rather landed uh, in the day, but, uh, you know, stuff happens. Now, hopefully, with the added mass of all of the fuel, as I said, I'm not used to doing this with so much fuel, I'm going to be able to, uh, I'm going to be able to come subsonic before I hit the, uh, before I hit the point of no return, which is about halfway across this plains between the KSC and the mountains. Uh, based on the speed I'm moving, I'm definitely going to overshoot it. Uh, which is fine, I've got enough jet fuel that I can do a little uh, turnaround, but um, I would have much rather just come in from uh, heading 090 and then... Um, Instead of having to come around from 270. And yeah, here we go. We're seeing my frame rate drop down to 11. Lagsbane is kicking in something fierce. Uh, my roommates are singing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut down the nuclear system. And I'm going to open up all of my vents. So that we can uh, start getting some air in here. Uh, yep, we're about to come almost subsonic. Uh... Yeah, once this hits less than 300 meters per second, we are officially uh, subsonic by, I believe, sea level standards. My goodness, I am a popular man today. My roommates are sort of demanding some attention. I am... my phone is going off. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to attempt to... We're going to attempt to turn out this way. Okay, we're going to cut the engines, because uh, we still need to slow down a bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to come up. We're going to attempt to make a very steep turn very slowly. And uh, as long as we don't crash into the ocean, I think we're going to be fine. We have to keep the roll going, though. <coughs> Uh, so that I don't um, lose my uh, bearing on the bottom of my craft. I really should have closed my door. <laughs> That's getting quite an obnoxious. Okay, so now we've got... Uh, we're definitely subsonic. And I can fire up the engines again. We're going to go full throttle. There we are. And... Uh, we're losing altitude a little bit, but that's fine. I don't mind so much losing altitude. Uh, there we are. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to line up with the runway. Uh, this is, again, not the ideal landing. I would have much rather come in. And the thing is, I'm usually a little lighter, and I had to guesstimate on my uh, approach uh, because I was slightly past where I normally burn. So, yay! Improvising! All right, there we are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit 1 and X. 1 so that I can shut off all of my air intakes. Uh, that way I will be able to um, just glide in without losing so much velocity. Uh, and we're just going to keep it at a nice 10 degree uh, down bubble. Wow, okay. <laughs> I've clearly been working on a Navy paper. Um, we're going to keep it at a nice 10 degree uh, angle downwards. Now we're going to deploy the gear. Now this ship is big enough that uh, <laughs> if I don't hit the runway exactly right, 
let's go ahead and turn on the lights. Um, if I don't hit the uh, runway exactly right, Bobinux Astronomic. Okay, he's been playing KSP lately. Uh, if we don't hit the runway exactly dead on, we're not going to uh, get both sets of uh, wing wheels on the runway. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to decrease my uh, downward movement and uh, see what I can do about balancing up my craft onto the runway. Okay, let's not flare too much as I still need to... Well, looks like it's time to kick in the jets again because I'm not going to hit the runway at this point. Ah, there we are. Uh-huh. Cut jets. All right. Cut air intakes. And now we're just going to flare until we touch down. And we're losing about a meter a second. Okay, we hit T. Then we hit the brakes. And boom, there we go. Uh, that's quite a bit of fuel left over, and that's also quite a bit of RCS left over, so if I wanted to, I could free these up, and we could potentially... Let's try this. <clears throat> Let me think. N. Right, I need to turn off the brakes. Okay, I definitely... Here we go. Alright, so let's see. Okay, we're backing up. Two meters a second. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe this is actually working. Okay. Yeah, we might be able to... Alright, so let's keep... Alright, that would take way too long. But anyways, yeah, so if you have some RCS left over, you can taxi. This has been that one guy. Thanks for watching.